Boom. Yo, what's up, everybody? Kobe Cheese here, and I'm telling you guys I'll be doing a video, and here we are. I am with some guys at Curse and, of course, Chaos, you know. So uh, I'll let you guys introduce yourselves in case anyone watching doesn't actually know you guys. So uh, we got uh, Panky over here. Tell me about that, bro. I'm Panky. I work for Curse in Europe. I work in the gaming house since then. Yeah, I cast things in Europe. Uh, been over here for the finals, having great fun here in this awesome house with, with Pluto. I'm Pluto. Yes, no soul. I don't have a soul, I'm a ginger. Uh, and I do shout casting and interviewing I'm as well. Cold. Why are you so cold? I do feel cold. I'm like a zombie. So like, I don't have any blood in my veins. It's, it's actually just uh, ginger juice, which is <laughs> a little, juice, little bit different. Gross, a little bit different. TM. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, shout casting interviews for Curse and. I'm also a ginger, and I live in this house, and that's that's pretty much it. This guy is chaos. He doesn't need an introduction. So. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's TSM Chaos. Play AD for a soul mid. You should know me. And you should know you. Don't know and I pretty you much. Why are you watching my channel? I pretty much also live in this house. I've been bugging me here for like five <laughs> days <laughs> until the Every world finals. Like like yeah, but yeah. Yeah, chaos. Kags pretty much right after they lost to Azuba Frost, which I predicted 3%. You guys blow. Um, <laughs> they he like came over with a giant backpack and he was like, "This is all my clothes. I'm staying here." Yeah. Like you didn't want to stay at the hotel because I think you guys your room was like a special in uni and like they're having a little love fest and, and now you're here with us having our love fest. Here all fun time. Imagine the gathering. Our giant our giant sausage fest here at the uh, first house, which apparently everyone thinks is what it is. But there are some girls here. I, I've definitely seen some girls here. So. <laughs> yes, yes, confirmed. Stan. Confirmed. Stan. All right, so we have we have a very deep conversation for you guys about socks. Very deep. So deep. Socks. Um, as you can see, can 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 they see your socks? In here? Look at these socks, dude. We got we got red stars or like red socks and blue stars. Same communism. <laughs> no, right? And then like like non-matching socks. Like, how do you guys both have non-matching socks? Like, how does this how does this take place? I just get them. Is this part of the draft like strategy or just, like throw the opponents off the game? I don't know. You just roll off. Yeah, you just roll. This is a sharing stick. Sharing stick. The sharing sharing stick. stick. I have the sharing stick. I don't know. Panky's socks are like way mismatched. Like, I'm not at that level yet. He's like perfected the art of mismatching <laughs> socks. I wonder how you go to airports and take off your shoes without like fucking. Oh, am I allowed to swear? Sure. Sure. Without TSA like destroying. Yeah, without like being embarrassed as hell. Like you have to take off your shoes, man, at the airport, and we're like people are just staring at your socks. Like, what do you do? I've never had to take my shoes off at an airport. What? 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 Have you ever been to an airport? Yeah. Fucking you're no, you slam here. <laughs> 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 you slam across, across the ocean. Holy shit. What? Am I gonna have to take my shoes off when I leave this yeah, stupid yeah. country? Yes, you yeah. have to take your shoes off, put it wait, in a bucket, wait, and wait. put it in the. Did you, yeah. Hold on, did you did you fly straight from Germany to yeah. Los Angeles? So when you go to Los Angeles, you're gonna have to like take your belt off and your socks off and everything out of your pockets yeah. and ev like put it all in a bucket. Yeah, and, like, well, you take your shoes off too. You always have to take your shoes off. Oh, you will. Oh, you will. I have to do my pockets. So I'm scared. Leave it off. You're going bro. You're going crap. I don't care if they see my socks. <laughs> I'm proud of my old socks and they can laugh and joke with them. Like, I'm gonna laugh and joke with them. But I've been to like more airports in the last year than I have in my life and I've never had to take my shoes off. Alright, there you go. Well, you guys have it. If you're panky, you're special, you don't have to take your shoes off at airports. So uh, I guess more serious stuff. Like, um, so how about Worlds, man? Did anything Worlds. go as you expected? Like, I, I thought there was some crazy stuff on. Moscow 5 should have won. I don't care. Moscow 5 should be the final, they should be there. That's, they should be, so they, they will always have my heart and my love. What, I mean, what, what do you think prevented them from getting there? TPA were too good. So they weren't good enough? <laughs> no. So they shouldn't have been there? No, they shouldn't have been there, because they're Russian. They're just because they're, they're Russian. Just because they're, okay. they're Russian. And not not yeah. skill based, but just no. because they're Russian. No, no, and just and, and that it holds yeah. a special place in your heart. Yes. Yes. Moscow 5 will be for life. Okay. Okay. Yeah, TPA, I think, just outplayed them. Um, I predicted Moscow 5 to be in the finals. I actually predicted Moscow 5 to like win the whole thing, regardless of who they were against. Yeah. Um, I also predicted TSM's defeat, uh, <laughs> TSM's downfall, uh, at the hands of uh, of one Azubu Frost. 
Um, but I mean, Chaos can shed some more light on that. Chaos is super happy about this. He's got some great things to share. Yeah. I know he does. But I heard as far as my uh, ultimate predictions go, M5 would have been in the finals. Um, Najin Sword may have been with them, or Zuba Frost. So I guess the Zuba Frost being there is, is still one out of two. I had a 50% chance of being right, or 50% accuracy. Uh, so tell us, about, tell us about your tournament, Chaos. Pass, pass, pass. This is a, this is a sour pass. subject for Chaos. Yeah, tell us about it. Okay, how do you feel particularly uh, about the $30,000 fine for Azubu? Pass, pass, no comment. How do you feel about losing to Azubu? Fuck you, Ginger. <laughs> how do you feel about, uh, about this? <laughs> how do you feel about that? <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> Well, I guess KX is going to decline comments, so we'll move yes. on to the... Well, okay, well, how about, less I, about Azubu, more about, like, did you guys see any, like, strategies that, that came out that you weren't expecting, or anything that you thought was, like, really innovative or cool? I think Alexich is still crazy for picking Evelyn when he did. Evelyn, uh, Zillion, you don't see very often, like, you used Zillion to see him a lot. Zillion, I see very often. You used to see him a lot. Alex, right? Alex plays Zillion everywhere. But, like, That's, as far as, like, other teams are concerned, I don't, I don't no. see that. Like, every, as far as the other teams are concerned, I mean, they had some little strategies and things, KX was confirming that... At the top level of play, the other pros were looking at saying, yeah, that was something new, that was something funky, but as far as we're concerned, as far as most people are concerned, there wasn't anything too crazy other than Moscow fighting. They just brought out some weird stuff, which, as Alex said, they just picked broken heroes. But yeah. <laughs> it worked. Um, on top of that, though, apparently TPA still have something crazy to bring out in the final. Something really? they still haven't so shown. They got, they got some stuff. Yeah, so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what this crazy thing TPA has. I think, I think uh, as far as overall comps and strategies, there was, it's pretty standard, like you said. The weirdest thing to me was the uh, the huge use of Kog'Maw yeah. lately. Like, before yeah. it was all Corky, all as yeah, and some Vayne too. It's, yeah. It was all Corky, all Ezreal, all Graves. Now there's like, uh, Kog'Maw I'm pretty sure has a very high win rate here now. I don't know the exact he percentage. He was 6 and up. Yeah. That's insane. That's that's. I mean, like, I mean, it's bonkers. Like, he hasn't changed, right? No, like people just, just stop taking him. Yeah. yeah. Like he, he was a late he was a late game farm up win at forty minutes, and right. the game started to become win at 25, 30 minutes. So he didn't get the farm, he didn't get the goal he needed. Right. So they stopped picking him, but people wore him back. I mean, and CRG, he's too. Yeah, I'm just watching. Like, CRG, just their standard. We'll play for forty five minutes, then we'll win. Man, they, they, they could they still track the games on forever, like yeah. I mean, every single one like every time they had to restart the game, it's like, well the next game lasted super long as well. Always well like it? it's it's seriously you. They've always played the longest games ever. And I think no other team could drag a series out across five days like they could. <laughs> so, <laughs> right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, I think that's a surprise. Yeah, uh, misfortune's weird, Kogma's weird, and uh, and Vayne has, has been weird. What do you what do you think about the Kogma play? Uh I don't know. I think M5 was definitely the most, like, had the most interesting team comps. Like, they had a percentage damage with, like, team comp with, what was it, Kog'Maw. They had Zen, which does percentage damage on his ult. And Evelyn, who does also per percentage damage. And then they had finishers, like, with true damage, like Zyra and Kog'Maw. So when Zyra and Kog'Maw die, they finish them off after doing percentage damage to them. So that team comp was super interesting. Aside from that, like, everything else is... Fairly standard. Pretty sick. So, uh, what do you think uh, going into like season three? What's um, are you like? Are you excited for anything going on there? Like, do you have any big plans? You guys going to be doing uh, something that people don't know about yet? Well, first of all, we're going to go back to New York and move to SF, which is uh, like just near all our sponsors and like partners and such. And we're going to be there for until at least season. Three season three starts yeah then we might move down here to LA but Sweet. I don't know we don't know yet we don't know yet so just temporary housing up there and then we come down here and hang out yep pretty much you guys gotta have a baller house like a first guy or are you just gonna borrow this one <laughs> and you wanna party uh oh. yeah, just level <laughs> <laughs> just level up <laughs> nah I think uh in SF we have like I don't know I think the rent is like 8k a month which is like ridiculous As SF is just so costly yeah in terms of rent, and then LA will probably have like a big house. I don't think as big as Curse because yeah. we don't have like that many players. You don't, you don't have we don't have gingers and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we have no gingers, unfortunately. You'd be so marketable, man. You should be like TSM ginger. You could be TSM ginger. You would almost have a soul. No. 
Uh, so season three, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, being centralized, like kind of here in Los Angeles, I think it's going to be really cool because like we're we're already here, we're already set up, you know. Uh, assuming Curse, you know, qualifies it for it, which we still haven't. If Curse ends up not qualifying for season three, there's going to be a lot of yelling and a lot of tears as well because that's going to be like a huge investment, pretty much. And you guys have put a lot into this place. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know how much you guys paid for this place. It's got to be a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, so like. If we don't make it into season three, if the team specifically, I guess it's not really me included, make it don't make it into season three, then there's going to be uh, serious some serious discussions, yeah, yeah. which is uh, going to be rough. But I think season okay, three as a whole. Percent, percent. Oh man! I, I, I can't wait Two for the, I can't wait for the season to start Two. just because it's going to be uh, it's going to be fun going to the events and like you know like they want to do it like like a big match like every week pretty much at their stadium yeah that's their stadium building a stadium right yeah that's what we're really talking about oh really okay oh, so what know. are they going to be doing for season 3 Does it, do we know that like like where are they going to be doing we do I don't know what's public though. okay so I'm, I don't want to so, comment too much so what I know what you know like, <laughs> you know, I, want, I want Peggy to be the face <laughs> yeah you go ahead you do the thing you're yeah, they can't get you there. Yeah, we have plans. We have, well, Ryan have big plans, and it's going to be great as far as I'm concerned. Like the, the things we've seen, the numbers we've seen. The, the well, how do, how do you feel about the, outcomes. the the centralized league, like kind of going off like some small things? Well, like, we I mean, they need they need that feeder tournament for like the next season. The teams to be swapped in and out. So there's still going to be some of the smaller tournaments going in, some of the, uh, the circuit things like IEMs, or IPLs, or MOGs, those kind of events. We don't know exactly how many of them are staying, we don't know exactly how many are going yet, but I think it's safe to say, right, I'm just going to kill them. They're, they're still going to get their support, they're still going to be here. And so those events are going to be, going to be strong. And we're going to see what at the moment are smaller teams getting more sponsor funding, because the big teams are going to have money coming in right so they're not going to need as many of the sponsors. Their sponsors are going to move for the other squads, and money's going to trickle down to what's currently considered the, the second tier, the tier two, tier three teams. And we're going to get more focus on them. And they're going to have places at these other tournaments where these other big teams are playing. So they're going to get more focus. And I think the scene's going to grow as a whole because of that. And yeah, so we, need, we need more teams. I mean, you look at America, then we've got top five, six teams, everything, everything below that. It's kind of a bit shady. Europe, we've got top three, Sorry. top four. Top three or top four, <laughs> and everything below that <laughs> changes in two weeks. And we have nothing else underneath, everyone just mingles into one. I don't even know where half the players are now. The two weeks here in LA, they'll probably will swap teams again. Yeah. Once that starts to stable out, once there's money there to keep those guys in our place, yeah, the season's going to grow much bigger, much stronger, and it'll get more players in. Like more people can afford to play full time, more people will. What do you think about, do um, you think we'll start seeing League placed in like actual TV networks and stuff like that? Because the numbers we're getting are so big. Yeah, the numbers, the numbers we're getting are big, but the numbers we're getting are bigger than some TV things. Exactly, right? And I don't think we need to go to TV. TV is dying in place of this streaming and web services and video on demand. So why are we trying to fight to get into the dying industry when we are the forefront of this new growing industry? I think we should just focus on streaming and bonds and the way we're going. Well said, sir. Well I, said. I definitely, I definitely uh, agree. Like, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> Boom! Uh, you know, like, you know, like like video killed the radio. You know, I think this is. I think streaming and, and the internet is like the next venue. You know, the next the next platform for for TV. I mean, you see it like Hulu, Netflix, like all that yeah. stuff is like like that gets basically more watched because people don't, especially because now because families and, and and people who work don't have time. That's why like DVR is so big now. You know, like it's just you can go watch a VOD now. You can go do this. You can go do that. So I really think the internet is is 100% the next avenue. And and like uh, just like Pinky said, we're already getting bigger numbers in like television programs and stuff. So like why even try to make that transition? You know, why make that jump to kind of a dinosaur that is TV? Yeah, make make them come to us. I think that's that's how it's going to be. Dinosaurs. Dinosaur. Uh, very terse this whole time. Yeah. Terse. Chill. Just speaking. He's like, I want to play Magic. Because I actually legit want to play Magic. <laughs> anyways, I, I completely agree that, yeah, TV is pretty much dying. Like, we have a TV in the TSM gaming house that we don't even use. Yeah. We haven't literally used it in a year. Like, it has not been turned on <laughs> oh, wow. for a year. It's got, like, dust and cobwebs. Yeah, it's just, like, it's just there. It's not home for spiders. It's just there, but... Uh, 
like streaming and call it just like videos like it's it's definitely the new thing I think there is like they were trying to work with the SBN to like get something going with like um, trying to get like sports networks to like acknowledge esports uh -huh. like but I'm not sure if like how that deal is going right now or if it's even gonna go through yeah I haven't even really heard anything about that one now I mean, you think right. that the advertisers are starting to say, no, you see numbers, like what was in the finals, like 5%, I heard like the stat of like 5% of the entire internet traffic was used for the playoffs. I mean, that's fucking huge. Yeah. 5%. 5%. 5%. And, and think of it, like, 5%, oh, 5%, 5%, but no, it's entire internet traffic, that's ridiculous. Uh, total internet traffic. Total internet traffic. In the world. In the world. In the world. For sure it was the world. 5% internet traffic in the world, that's immense. That's that, so big. I think that, you know, it's, Internet's a big place. Yeah, yeah, Internet's yeah. not a small place. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that is. That's what I think, like, it'd be good if we went on TV, even though, like, like we don't have to force it. It'd be good just to, for, like, sponsors and such, like, old school sponsors that, like, don't really understand esports, that don't really understand uh, streaming, yeah. like, uh, to, like, acknowledge it and be like, oh, it's on TV, it's legitimate. I get, so. I get sharing on the TV just to make those old school sponsors and those old school companies step up, but it shouldn't be us chasing the TV saying we want to be here. It should be TV us doing it our way and TV coming to us saying, yeah, yeah. we want you on our network. Yeah. And then that in turn. We do have some things for our customers. Yeah. Uh, we, should, we should never be just a TV program. Yeah. We have the streaming companies there at the moment that are following us and going with us and growing with us. And if you take 5% of all internet traffic this weekend to the players, and the streaming companies kept up. We didn't have any issues. We didn't have five big flags. Five percent. Uh, they kept it going. Five. Bigger than three. Five. Uh, way bigger, bigger than, than three. Two and a half. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Oh my god. Bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. Yep. Bring it back. Yep. Everyone suck at this. So where's where's Steve, man? He's like hiding. Uh, Liquid. Steve, Steve yeah, is Steve doing. He's, he's finishing off his drop. Nah. Oh my god. Steve. He's actually playing my. Papa Steve! I'm so mad right now. Papa Steve! Papa Steve! Oh my god. So mad. Yeah, yeah it's okay. Hard. You guys did it. Yeah. Uh, Alright, uh, so we're kind of whoring ourselves out here a little bit. And uh, I mean, I think everybody knows about Kiaki yeah, Stream Day. They streamed all the time. Um, on, uh, you guys, you're on. Are you on Twitch? Twitch. You're still on Twitch. Yeah. Are you guys planning on going to. Oh, what's the deal? Like, people are like, switching back and forth. And, like, Owen and Twitch. Like, do you have any, like, thoughts on that? How like, popular? Um. I mean, Twitch and Owen is like constantly battling each other, yeah. so like they're both, I think they're both pretty good, but we're just with Twitch. Twitch yeah. That's pretty much it. Alright, so head up Twitch, check out Chaos. Um, mm. You're, you have your own YouTube in addition to working with Curse. Oh, well. are we doing shout outs? Yeah, shout out to oh, Shout out to Solomid, shout out to our sponsors Razer, Origin PC, Ventrilo, and Gunner. Yeah, who's next? Who's next? Get him up, get him up. Okay. Okay. Watch out, Steve. Get out of here. Ah, Papa Steve. Steve. Okay. Uh, yeah, definitely shout out to every everyone. Gunners, Logitech, all that stuff. Team Speak. He's not even here. Uh, Reign of Gaming. youtubecom slash Gaming is where we do interviews and stuff like that. And then my personal YouTube. youtubecom slash Pluto. twittercom slash Pluto and facebookcom slash Pluto. All those things. It's all one name. Curse Pluto. Just type it into any site, except for weird sites. Don't type it into those weird sites. Ooh. And then we'll be good. Like, don't Google it. But uh, yeah, no, I, actually <laughs> wanted to, I actually wanted to talk about Law Pro. Yeah, let me see. So uh, I wanted to I wanted to get Steve here because I mean he's big on the the Law Bros site. If you guys haven't checked it out, I mean uh, they do some really cool stuff. You guys have guys just mostly from the pros. Like there's there's a lot of different places you can get um, strategy and stuff from. But I think you guys are really cool because you you actually put a lot of effort into your website and you have a lot of information. It's really like easy to access. So, but you know more about it than me and you're working on it, so I kind of want you to jump in here and talk about it. Uh, so if you don't know me, I'm Liquid112, I'm the um, team founder, and it's not bad. Uh, <laughs> and uh, now director of esports for Curse, and um, we run a site called Law Pro. It is kind of like a, uh, a site where you go to to get really good information about how to play champions from 
the actual pros that play them in tournaments. So there are some other sites out there that um, publish guides that are from the user community, which is great. There's a lot of really good user community guides, but we really wanted to focus in, if you want kind of that pro content, if you want to find out how St. Vicious plays um, Shavana, or if you want to, we just published an extinct guide for uh, Eve, and right now his rating on Eve, he's like, I think something like uh, 27 and one in solo queue. So uh, he just published a guide on um, on Lol Pro. So uh, check out there if you ever are like about to play. Whoops, looks like the audio actually cut off right there, unfortunately. Anyways, he was about to say, if you're gonna play a new champion, go check out lolpro.com in order to get those strategies. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the interview. This is Kobe G's. I definitely would like to do some more of these in the future if you like this whole style. If I'm around the pro teams, once I move to California later next year, I plan to do a lot more of this stuff. But for now, I'll just be doing podcasts in my house, probably over Skype and stuff like that. So let me know what you guys think with the comments down below. And I'll see you around next time. This is Kobe G's. Peace out.